We know that for an API to be effective, it needs to have high performance and low latency. Low latency means less delay in receiving a response from the API, because otherwise, it can negatively impact the user experience of applications relying on the API. And that's why caching is important to know in order to optimize your Node.js APIs because it's a technique that involves storing frequently accessed data in a temporary storage location, drastically improving response times. Let's explore the different caching mechanisms for your Node.js APIs. The first is in-memory caching. In-memory caching is a high-performance technique that involves storing frequently accessed data directly in the application's memory space. This allows for rapid data retrieval without the need to query databases or external services on every request. In Node.js, two popular choices for in-memory caching are Redis and Memcached. A good example for in-memory caching is Redis. Consider this example. Here, we create a Redis client using the Redis npm package. Then the set method stores a key value pair in the Redis cache. After that, the callback function is executed once the set operation is complete, and it outputs OK to the console. We then use the get method to retrieve the value associated with the key key from the Redis cache. This basically demonstrates a basic in-memory caching scenario using Redis. In a real-world application, you would use this caching system to store and retrieve more complex data, improving the overall performance of your Node.js API. Then in number 2, we have distributed caching. Distributed caching involves storing cached data across multiple nodes, allowing for horizontal scalability. Unlike in-memory caching, where data is stored locally within the application's memory, distributed caching distributes the cache across a network of nodes. This is beneficial due to three reasons. Number one is scalability, where distributed caching allows you to scale horizontally by adding more nodes to your caching infrastructure. This ensures that the cache can handle increased loads and demands. Number two would be high throughput. With cache data distributed across nodes, the system can handle a higher volume of requests simultaneously, leading to improved throughput. And number three is availability, where even if one node goes down, the data can still be retrieved from other nodes, ensuring higher availability and fault tolerance. A good example here is again Redis, which can help in distributed caching as well. Here we create a Redis client using the Redis npm package, specifying the connection details for a distributed Redis cluster. And note that the Redis cluster might consist of multiple nodes, each contributing to the overall storage and retrieval of cached data. This ensures that the cache is not limited by the memory of a single node, providing the benefits of scalability and fault tolerance. Then the set method stores a key value pair in the specified distributed Redis cache. Now the third way for caching Node.js APIs would be content delivery networks. A content delivery network is a network of distributed servers strategically placed at multiple locations worldwide to deliver web content more efficiently to users. They are particularly useful for caching and serving static assets such as images, CSS, and JavaScript files. CDNs are designed to reduce latency because they serve content from servers that are physically closer to end users. This accelerates content delivery because they can deliver the content quickly without having to retrieve them from the origin server for every request, ultimately improving the overall user experience and also reducing the load on your origin server. Consider this example in Node.js. Here the CDN URL variable holds the base URL of the CDN, where the cached images are stored. When a request for images slash profile.png is made, the server responds with a redirect to the CDN URL, effectively serving the image from the CDN. Now the fourth way for caching Node.js APIs would be client-side caching. Client-side caching involves storing resources locally on the user's device to avoid redundant network requests. This technique is commonly used for caching static assets like images, CSS, and JavaScript files in web browsers and mobile applications. Client-side caching helps improve the user experience by reducing the need to fetch the same resources repeatedly from the server, thereby reducing latency. Caching resources on the client side reduces the need for repeated downloads, conserving bandwidth, and speeding up the loading time of web pages. And client side caching also allows resources to be available even when the user is offline. This is particularly useful for mobile applications. Consider this Node.js example here. Here, this line sets the cache control HTTP header, instructing the client or the browser to cache the resource and specifying the maximum amount of time the resource should be considered fresh, that is this many seconds, which is approximately one year. 
Then this line sends the requested image file to the client. The root option specifies the root directory for serving or sending the static files from, which in this case is the images directory. So basically, when a request is made for an image, the server responds with cache headers instructing the client to cache the image for up to one year. Subsequent requests for the same image within that time frame will be fulfilled from the client's cache without making a network request to the server, leading to faster loading times. And with that, those were four ways to implement caching in Node.js for high-performant APIs. If you found the video insightful, drop a like and subscribe for more.